Hello, and welcome to this very special video series from HR Magazine. My name is Katie Jacobs, and I am the editor of HR Magazine. This year, to celebrate our 25th anniversary, we are pleased to present a series of video interviews with Dave Ulrich on the future of the HR profession. Ulrich is the father of the HR business partner model and is consistently voted one of the most influential thinkers in HR. In this video, kindly sponsored by Midland HR, Ulrich discusses how HR professionals can best measure the impact, outcome and value of their interventions. Dave, now we're going to talk about the outcomes of a successful HR. So first of all, can you explain what you actually mean by outcomes? We're talking about deliverables. Here's a simple metaphor, and I like metaphors. There's a business table, and the general manager is at the head of the table, and we're trying to help the business win. Finance people come to the table with economic data. EBITDA, costs, profits. Marketing and salespeople come to the table with customer data. Who are our customers? What's our net promoter score? Operations people come to the table with operational data, productivity, manufacturing. When HR people come to the table, what do they bring? It's a very simple question. And the old answer was lunch, which is a horrible <laughs> answer. What we bring is great analytics, but it's not abstract analytics. It's analytics about specific things. And we believe there's three, talent, leadership, and culture. Nice acronym. TLC, that's why we did it. <laughs> yeah, T and sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> so talent, I think, is when I talk to HR directors, which is what I spend most of my time doing, Everybody always mentions talent. I think it's also a word that's caught on on the CEO agenda as well. It always comes up top of those. What a CEO is most concerned about talent and skills always score really highly. I think there are a lot of different definitions of talent. People seem to think about it and address it in, in different ways. We believe talent has three parts. One is competence. That's right people, right place, right time, the skills for the outcomes. Times commitment. So you get smart people who are willing to work hard. Um, I've actually known sometimes you have really smart, competent people, but they're not very committed. They don't work so hard. And the emerging piece of talent is what we call contribution. Mm -hmm. These two are really around engagement. I think David McLeod's work here in the UK is phenomenal when he looks at engagement. Because you've got to have competence, then you have behavioral engagement, that's commitment, mm -hmm. and you have emotional engagement, that's contribution. Mm -hmm. You're an editor of a great mm -hmm. magazine. Are you doing it for the money? Oh, that no. was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> you know what you're doing it for. You're competent. You're skilled. Yeah. You're committed. You're willing to work hard. But I bet you find some meaning. By the way, I'll speak for myself. One of the cool things for me, it's happened a few times. I get on an airplane and someone's got my book. And I don't have pictures on the book for obvious reasons because I look stupid. And I look, you know, I say, how's the book? And I, yeah, this jerk's got a couple of good ideas. And I think, whoa, I got meaning out of that. <laughs> I get meaning. Mm. When I see HR people using ideas, when I see the world changing, our experience is competence was the agenda for the 80s and 90s mm. and 2000. We know how to get good skills. Commitment's been the Gallup Index, mm. the Mercer Index, great indices. And I think we're now finding motivation and purpose mm. from the next generation. Mm. How do we get e em emotional engagement in what we do? Mm. I guess that leads on quite nicely to leadership because you can't have any of that kind of- Actually, I'm gonna go next that. to culture. Mm because I think talent and culture merge around leadership is the third. But let me go to culture. One of the things I love to do is to listen to really smart people. About a year ago, I had a chance to listen to a new head of HR in a company called Flextronics. Nobody would know it, but it's the guts behind your, your system. They have yeah. 200 and some thousand employees. He said, I came to HR out of operations. I've been a head of HR now for about four months. Everyone in HR is consumed with talent. Hire people, pay people, train people, motivate people. He said, when I think of an S-curve, I think we're 60 to 80% up the curve. Mm. We know where to find our people. Yeah. We know how to pay them. We know how to train them. We're even better at engaging mm. them. He said, here's our problem at Flextronics. We have a culture. We have a pattern of work. We build pieces. Mm. We're trying to change our culture, and we can't seem to get it done. Mm. I think we're 10% up of the S-curve. Mm -hmm. By the way, I hear that, and I hear other heads of HR. I think talent matters, but I think culture matters more. Here's my headline. The war for talent mm -hmm. has been the metaphor for 15 years. Mm -hmm. We now have to have victory through organization. Mm -hmm. You win wars with organization, and you have victory through being in it together. And that's the culture piece. Can we as HR people begin to shape and architect a new culture 
for the firm. Mm. I always hear people kind of talk of culture as a means of, it is a, a driving its competitive advantage. And it's a word that I think is thrown about quite a lot. It's but a fuzzy word. It is, it is it really, is really fuzzy. fuzzy. And in fact, I was in Europe once mm. and I said, you've got to work on culture. And they said, we don't have tickets to the opera, <laughs> <laughs> which is not what culture is. Yeah. I think we can get precise on mm. culture. And let me tell you our view from the outside in. Mm. Culture traditionally is, a, um, is an event. Mm. You walk into this gorgeous room where we're meeting, look at yeah. these books. You see a culture of somberness, you mm. see a culture of wisdom until you look at the titles. But, <laughs> but the library gives you a culture, that's an event. Then it's a pattern. It's the norms, behaviors, values of a company. We believe that ultimately culture is an identity. Mm. Culture is the identity of the firm in the mind of your key customers. So you think of HR Magazine. What do we want to be known for that differentiates us in all these areas that are trying to build knowledge around HR? You're trying to be known for insight, for impact of senior level HR executives. That should be the culture. When your external brand becomes your internal culture, then you have a culture that creates distinctive advantage. So when I see companies trying to change the culture, I say, what are you doing? We're building values. That's not what culture is about. Mm. Culture is about the value of values. Mm. Take your values to your customer. Are they the right values? Will they pay for them? And what do you have to do inside to reflect the external culture? Mm. We believe culture is the next venue for HR. Mm. How do you make our internal culture consistent with our external brand? I think this really links in really well to this idea I hear quite a lot about at the moment is a whole systems approach to how you run an organization because all Great of these metaphor. things have to be Great have to metaphor. be linked. That and systems theory from decades ago yeah. that a, a steering wheel is, is irrelevant unless it's part of a car. Yeah. And if you can't put the system together, you don't have the culture. Mm. And the system is effective when customers pay you a premium for it. It isn't one piece. For example, you're rebuilding your website. It isn't a website. Mm. It's the system you're creating that customers or those interested mm. in new ideas will, will, will be committed to and to pay for. Mm. That's what HR folks should be doing with mm. culture. So there's no point just doing a talent program or we're going to do some leadership development now without considering Great the kind of culture Great. that you're actually Great trying to, yeah. to create. And I love that how that actually links to the external nice. brand values. So the first question in culture would be, who are our key customers mm. or other external stakeholders, community or investors? What do we want to be known for by them? And how do we turn that external identity into an internal set of disciplines? Mm. And how do you make it stick as well? Well, that's where the internal disciplines become so important. We've said there's four mm. things to sustain a culture. One is an intellectual agenda. Mm. Articulate it, clarify it, repeat it, communicate it, mm. ten, 10 to 1. Two is a behavioral agenda. Let employees act on it. Let employees tell you how their behavior links to the outside identity. Three is the process agenda, which is weave it into HR, hire, pay, train against it. And four, which is the leadership. Mm. Make sure our leadership brand mm. is consistent with it. Mm. So talk me through kind of big ideas that you have on leadership at the moment and where this fits we are within. So, we are yeah. so excited about the study of leadership. Mm. Number one, why it matters. And the answer is because investors care. Mm. This is so powerful. If an investor can get a 10 to 15% premium because we in HR have created a leadership capability, that's moving, that's powerful. Second, it's not about the leader, it's about leadership. Mm. Often we get enamored with the authentic mm. leader, the great leader. You wanna distribute it deep into the organization and it's the collective leadership. Third, it's not about what the leader does, it's about what people get from the leader. Mm. I did a column and I published it and I'm a little hesitant. And I said, authenticity, which is a hot topic in leadership, be authentic, be authentic, yeah. is frankly narcissism. Mm. Unless your authenticity creates value for somebody else. Mm. And so leadership is not about what you do, it's about what somebody gets from what you do. Mm. And that's the bridge. Leaders drive talent and leaders embody culture. Mm. And that's why we have those three outcomes.